Well, this is day 19 of 21 days of prayer and fasting. You're probably getting tired of seeing my face every morning, but I made a commitment uh, to post every day. No idea what's going on with that piece of hair. Y'all are going to have to ignore that. Um, today's message is something that is really important and really meant so much to me. Um, so I'm going to share a little bit of my personal story with this. This might be a tiny bit longer than our one scripture um, post that I normally do. But there's so many things that work together for this message. And I wish I had more time to really put it all together and explain it to you. But, you know, um, really about two years ago, God just started working in my life. And anybody that knows me knows that I've had a colorful life. I own my mistakes. I own everything I've ever done. And God has always been a part of my life. But uh, for a while, He wasn't directing my path. I was trying to direct my own path. And so even though mistakes I made, maybe they weren't, you know, they weren't malicious or they weren't bad. But I did make a lot of mistakes. But everything in my life brought me to where I'm at now. And I've questioned God. I've questioned God over and over again. Why? Why do these things happen to me? You know, I'm a good person. I try to do everything right. Why did all these things happen? And God just kept telling me to be patient. Just be patient and I would understand. And so about two years he, ago, he really started changing some things in my life. And about a year ago, I mean, a little over a year ago, he called me and he called me loud and he said this is what I want you to do I want you to take all these experiences everything that you've been through that you feel like makes you imperfect or feel like has caused you to be judged or people to look down on you or treat you a certain way I want you to take every single bit of that and this is what you are going to use to reach other people so many people out there who are feeling that, who've been through a tenth of what you've been through, and they feel lost, and they feel judged, and they feel pushed to the side, and they feel like nobody loves them, nobody wants them, nobody cares, nobody's looking out for them, nobody's coming to get them, nobody's coming to save them, nobody's reaching their hand out. And you're going to take everything, all the pain that you've had all these years, you're going to reach out. And so that is what God's called me to do. And I have been listening and listening, and I pray every day, Father, lead me. Lead me where you want me to be. Give me the words. He led me to getting a Bachelor of Arts in Christian Studies with an em emphasis on youth ministry. I have been digging deep, taking my classes, getting up at the crack of dawn so I can take classes before I go to work. And that's the favorite part of my day. I love these classes. I love getting deeper into the Word on a theological level, understanding so much, so many scriptures I've heard all my life and things I've read all my life, but never truly grasped the deeper meaning to that. Thoroughly enjoying that. However, lately, you know, I felt like maybe I'm not good enough. You know, maybe I haven't learned enough. Maybe I need to wait God really called me to do these 21 days of posting. And I don't know what I'm supposed to say. I feel like I look like an idiot. You know, I, I feel like I'm. people are probably making fun of me. They're probably laughing at me. And they're probably, you know, going, ah, she's stupid. We're not going to watch this. I have one or two people that might, you know, like a video. And I do appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. But that's not the point. It's what God called me to do. And so that's what I'm going to do. In my studies early this morning, um, I had posted something in a discussion forum, and my professor came up under there, and out of the blue, it had nothing to do with what I had posted, and his response to what uh, I was talking about, he said, read Jeremiah 1. Now, this literally had nothing to do with the post, but I said, well, you know, maybe God called him. And Jeremiah 1, it's about when God calls Jeremiah to be a prophet. And Jeremiah is not really arguing with him, but he's expressing doubt. And uh, God tells him, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you a point apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. 
And uh, Jeremiah responds and he says, but God, I'm too young. I, I can't speak. I don't know what I'm doing. And God comes back and he says, don't be afraid of the people. For I will be with you and will protect you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then God reaches out and he touches Jeremiah's mouth and he says, look, I have put my words in your mouth. Today I appoint you to stand up against nations and kingdoms. Some you must uproot and tear down, destroy and overthrow. Others you must build up. Jeremiah continues to express doubt. And God tells him, For see, today I have made you strong, like a fortified city that cannot be captured, like an iron pillar. On a bronze wall, you will stand against the whole land, the kings, officials, priests, and people of Judah. They will fight you, but they will fail. For I am with you, and I will take care of you. I, the Lord, have spoken. And this just like touched me and all my doubts that I've been having. And it's like God talking to me through the scripture. Then this morning on our 21 days of prayer and fasting, the message from the pastor was about reaching our sphere of influence. And he talked about the story. We've all heard the story of the woman in the well, where Jesus goes to the well and the woman doesn't want to talk to him because they're, they're not the same kind of people that are supposed to be speaking to each other. She also feels ashamed. Um, and Jesus tells her to go get her husband. And she says, but I don't have a husband. And he says, you're right. You don't have a husband because you've been married five times and the man you're living with right now, you know, basically he's just a live-in. And I've heard that all my life. And like the pastor pointed out today, and I've never thought about it like this. Jesus knew all this about her. All these things that she was ashamed of, things that made her think she wasn't good enough. Jesus already knew that. He already knew it, and he still chose to speak to her, and not only to her, through her. Because she turned around, and she went back to her whole village and told everyone, save the whole village. God worked through her, someone that the village viewed as undesirable, or maybe someone who should be ashamed of their life, their lifestyle. Every single bit of that is really speaking to me and I hope it'll speak to you too he uh, the pastor pointed out four things that are incredibly noteworthy in this message number one he says you don't have to be perfect to spread the message of God to draw others in you don't have to be perfect you don't have to have your act together you don't have to have everything all squared away and one thing he said, and this is a quote from him, he said, when you are thirsty, you don't care who brings you water. When you're laying in there dehydrated, you don't care what they look like. You don't care what they've done. And that's what we're doing. We're giving living water like the woman in the well. The second thing he brought out is you don't have to be polished. Something that's concerned me is, you know what? I've read the Bible my entire life, but I don't have the theological background to 100% understand every single hidden passage in the Bible. And, well, nobody does. And I am learning more and more and more in my classes, but God is helping me to understand and see things that are not even in my classes. God has been speaking to me, literally to me and through me, and I'm so excited about it. Then he says... You don't have to be prominent. This woman wasn't prominent. She wasn't an important person in society. As a matter of fact, she would probably be considered someone low in society. But she was able to save her entire village. And the fourth thing is, all you have to do is participate. I, I really enjoyed um, this message today. He, he nailed it and it really spoke to me in an area that I needed to be spoken to. Because like he said, you don't know. God puts you places. You might be the answer to somebody else's prayer. Somebody else is praying for something in your moment. The moment that you take to answer God's call for your life might be the saving grace for someone else.
like he said, something so small to you might be huge for somebody else. You might be the person that changes their entire life. So don't let people make you feel judged. Don't let people scare you away from doing what you know God's calling you to do. And I have so much more I would love to say about this. Some, some things that I thought about last night. Um, some things that God is speaking to me so strong. I mean, he's just literally giving me words. And I've started writing things down with timestamps because it's interesting to me. Because I know these things will come about exactly like God's telling me but it's going to be interesting to me um, to be able to show people look God is so real and he's so mighty and he's so powerful he spoke this into existence and so like I said so many things I'd love to go into but I'm not going to this is already long enough um, but I hope you guys have an awesome day it's raining here don't slip down <laughs> and I will see you tomorrow. We're almost at the end of my 21 days, and I think I'm going to be a little bit sad about that. But talk to you later. Bye.